Nice. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop here and Matt Easton, Scholar Gladiatoria. Hi folks. So we're back for another episode of Weird Weapons and Matt has got no idea, no idea. I'm trying not to look. <laughs> so, you ready for this one, Matt? Okay, go on. And there we have it. A shield full of throwing darts. <laughs> nice. You ever seen anything like that before? No, not in the medieval period. Nor had I. So I was first alerted to this by a guy called Augusto Burbrandt, who's an excellent armourer, a friend of mine. Now, I'd never seen anything like this. And it came from a manuscript by a guy called Mariano Tacola. And it's 1433. Uh, the manuscript is in Genesis. And it's weird. So you've got darts on the back, on the inside of the shield, and a heater shield on the front. This is a heater shield, and this is where my confession comes, Matt. The picture actually shows, there's no scale on it, obviously, but, well, there are two pictures. One where the shield probably sits about that high to the ground, uh -huh. and another one where it's nearly at shoulder height. Okay. Just get yourself one of those to have a look at. So these, these kind of war darts that are like a giant arrow actually appear in a whole bunch of different manuscripts, don't they? But I have never, ever personally seen these fitted to the inside no. of a shield. So have a look at this. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've so, never seen that before. Oh, and they've very clearly got these, these loops. These finger loops on. And here you've got a heater shield, which you've got the scale of the sword. Is that right? Who knows? Yeah. Funnily enough, there seems to be some Latin or Italian mm. written next to this one. And there's a word there that looks a bit like plumbata to me. Ah. <laughs> so I wonder, is this a medieval interpretation of classical texts? Because we know that Plumbata... Are oh, you going to spoil this whole film? <laughs> Are you telling me this never existed? <laughs> I'm not going to say it never existed, because we know that they did yeah. like to replicate things in the Renaissance. Well, and to think about. I mean, that's yeah. what it was and this is, the Itali this is the beginning of the Italian Renaissance. And it is so, an era of thought and yeah. interpretation, yeah. yeah. So maybe it is. Maybe it is exactly that, because there is a rack of five of them, that he is saying, this is my interpretation interpretation of a plumbata. Maybe. A throwing dart Maybe that not. goes on the back of a shield, which we think that the late Romans did. Yes. Yes. So well, that could did. be it. But but we know these these throwing darts appear in loads of medieval art. So we know that they existed. I'm in... going to get you something else. Okay. Now, now that you know what we're talking about, I can get something else out. <laughs> so what Matt was just referring to now are these throwing darts here. And, well, you can see how high they are roughly. We're down on the ground now. You see them, if you look for them, you will see them all over medieval art and very often being thrown by skeletons. I don't know why. <laughs> so there's some symbolism to it. Yeah. But you see them an awful lot of medieval art, um, sieges, naval warfare, and mm. battlefield warfare. Mm. And then this one here has got a leather thong attached to it, which aids the distance on throwing. I've got other films about exactly these objects. So that's to put it in context, that's what Matt's talking about. Mm. But scale-wise, very, very different. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the size of a, a very large longbow arrow, basically, isn't it? Um, I mean, it's even... Well, it's, not one for me. <laughs> no, no, but maybe Joe Gibbs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's about the length of a yeah, very a little, long, a little but, but, but thicker um, mm. and not barreled. I, I, I'm, it's guesswork from, from a pretty raggedy picture. Yeah, yeah. Um, but those broadheads are brutal, and that they do hint at anti-horses you mentioned. That does hint at soft targets rather than uh, armoured targets. I don't, I don't think it hints at it, I think it says it blatantly. Yeah. So this shape of the head here always flares out, always a barbed um, flaring out broadhead. And whenever you see these in the manuscripts, they always, always, always have that picture, except for one that I've seen where it's cast brass. But other than okay. that, they're always like this. So you can't see the heads properly on that manuscript picture, but I figured they probably followed the same thing. And yeah. it's against flesh. Yeah, for sure. So obviously if you were carrying a shield of some kind, be it a buckler or a larger shield, you could carry some of these in one hand, but with these large ones you could probably only maximum carry two or three in a hand, I would say, conveniently. Yeah, well you see that with the Irish um, Kern, I think they were. Yeah. Who, well you see them with a bundle of maybe three of them, yeah. Yeah, whereas fitting them to the back of a shield, you've now got more of them, and if this is for uh, maybe trying to interfere with the charge of opponents or cavalry, defend against cavalry, or uh, perhaps using just general skirmishing actions. That gives you more ammunition, doesn't I it? I suspect skirmishing, because the size of that shield says to me that they are putting themselves in harm's way. 
because the other thing you can see from from this Although it's a different kind of shield, it's not exactly a convenient thing to have on the inside of your shield. No, I'm wondering where does your arm, how does your arm interact with the... You're not really fighting with this, I think. I mean, yeah. look at the whole thing, it's ridiculous in that sense. <laughs> so I think it's probably, contextually, maybe a little bit like a crossbow pervase that you move into position. Yeah, but the picture definitely shows them stored like that, doesn't it? Yeah, and again, the picture, if you look at the bottom, it's a little indistinct, but I've taken it to be that there is a solid covering there. It's not like individual lines. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because um, sometimes in this type of art, they show things transparent, so you can see what's going on inside them, don't yeah, they? So. Yeah, but fantastic. So... I really want to throw one of these now. So let's go down, and we'll take these, and we'll go and throw them. Yeah, cool. We're down the range now with Matt and Alexander from the New Zealand Stage and Screen Combat School. We haven't seen him yet in this film, but he's going to be in another couple of ones that I'm doing and Matt's doing and things. Interesting bloke. But what we have discovered about Alexander while we've been playing is he can throw further than Matt and I, so that's okay. his role today. So I'll show you the whole setup here. So we have this dart, and as you can see in the manuscript, you've got a leather thong. Now I've tried it with string and it sort of tangles around your finger, it doesn't work so well, and so leather actually really, really works well. I've just slit it at the top there, and that makes that sort of adjustable. It can slide up and down. And that means that you can actually clinch it to where you want it to be. Because actually, we all throw it a little bit differently. And then when you throw it, you don't hook your finger right through. That doesn't work. Just the pad of your finger like that, and then hold it like a dart. So, I'll go first up. Oh, that's good. Oh, that is a nice one. So that's my first one out, and it is, I don't know, eight or nine metres short of the 32 metre mark where the helmet is. So Matt, take it away. Oh, well, that's kicked up. <sighs> right. Now, interestingly, Matt's one really kicked up. Now that's because the thong is in slightly the wrong position for him. So I'd suggest that he moves it slightly forward on the next one, but we'll find out. Okay. Alexander. Oh. Nice. So that one is a couple of metres short, so I'm going to say about 30 metres. But what's interesting about Alexander's is the thong position was obviously slightly different to Matt's, and mine in fact. Mine went much flatter, Alexander's went much higher and down. So you can change the thong position, even on the same dart, for whether you want it flat and hard into somebody's faces, or up over the top of shields and down onto them. As an experiment now for Matt, I think if you take one and you put the thong on the green mark, and then you move it maybe a hand's breadth further forward on the second one. Okay. And just see what difference it makes. Ah. That was pretty good, actually. That one kicked up again for Matt, but I'm guessing... Where's it gone? There. So, so a big difference is I threw more upwards. You, you to do it as well. <laughs> so that first one I threw too mm -hmm. straight because I'm too used to aiming at targets. So right. I think I was thinking about range. Well, go again. So move this one further forward. Okay. Forward of the green mark, yeah. so... Yeah, uh, no, I'd go another bit more, same again. Yeah, about a bit further forward again. Because okay. it, it, it does make quite a difference. Okay. And then also, just the, uh, just the tip of your finger, Okay. like that. That's it. Nice. Oh, that's gone beyond. That's gone beyond, so that is... So I'm not just a weakling, it's no. technique. <laughs> <laughs> it is technique, it is technique. Uh, actually, Matt won that round, so sorry, Alexander, you are done with this. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take the thong off and we're going to repeat this. It just uh, loosens off, you can pull it off past the fletchings, and we're going to throw it now, unaided, and see what kind of distance we've got. So if you want to take that one, Matt, and you throw. Ah. It slid through my yeah. hand as I threw it. But quite short. Sure. Alexander, you yeah. go. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> ah. Oh, that is... Uh, <laughs> throwing's not my thing. <laughs> yes, but it did win that round. <laughs> Other than Matt being very cool, the actual takeaway from that is that his arrow is now, I don't know, 15 metres shorter yeah. of the one that he threw before. Now, 15 metres for the cost of a little bit of leather thong that is a bargain. What we can tell from that really is that the use of the throwing loop on it extends distance massively. The fact that they're really quite small doesn't alter the fact that they're dangerous. I think you'd agree with that? 
Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't want one of those <laughs> if, uh, hitting me, no. The arrowhead suggests to me, the spearhead, dart head, is that it's against flesh, not mm -hmm. against armour. I mm -hmm. think that's evident as well. Yeah. Big shields and multiples skirmishing? Yeah, I mean, I think against lightly, you know, people with no armour or at most kind of, you know, clothing or may mm. maybe fabric armour, or indeed against horses. The next question I would have is, how fast can you throw? We're going to assume that the guy's taken them out of his shield and we're going to send five of them down there and see what happens. <coughs> Range not so good. Well done. So I don't know how long that was. We'll put the count up on screen. Well, here we are. Uh, Mariano Tackler's throwing darts. What did you make of the whole thing? Yeah, really, really cool. I mean, I, I suck uh, with, the, with these loops. I mean, it's the first time that I've tried to use um, them on this size of object. Uh, clearly, I'm having a kicking problem the way that they're coming out. When I'm releasing, I should be adding extra energy to the throw, which I think in one of my throws, it definitely, everything yeah. came together and it worked. But in a lot of my throws, the energy is just pulling the back of the projectile down. But that is a little bit of practice. Yeah, yeah. And a little bit of loop adjustment. Uh, tweaking where they are on the shaft, uh, maybe maybe the length of this, I don't yes, know. Definitely. Yeah, various things. And also how you put your finger into the ring, how deep you put it and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I must say that's something that I noticed. You, your natural reaction is to put your finger right in. Yeah. And actually, it, it can't, you've just got to have the tip of your finger on it and it works much Because it needs to come out more easily, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. So in terms of uh, Mariana Tackler's invention, thought, doodle, I mean, I think it actually seems really practical. Uh, why shouldn't it work? You know, we've got this idea that the Romans had plumbata attached to shields, perhaps. Um, and why shouldn't, why shouldn't that be a thing? And I think having light, small projectiles that you can reel off into either an enemy who are charging you or an enemy that you're charging or cavalry are annoying you coming near your lines and you can just uh, sort of make the horses not want to do that mm. anymore. It, mm. It's giving you another option in your toolbox. Yeah, no, I think it is. And for relatively little cost. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it, that is, yeah. in, the, in the world of weapons, that is a cheap item. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and a lot of fun as well. It's a lot of fun and, <laughs> and contemporary with the, the more common and larger darts that we just don't see these days, you know, in yeah. museums or on reenactment battlefields yeah. or in films, but we're everywhere in the artwork. Yeah. But I guess they were disposable things and they were just, mm. you know, once they were used, they were thrown away and nothing survives. Well, I've, I've wondered about these, that the heads, I suspect, because this is on about an 18 mil shaft, that's on about 15, okay. the heads people just write off as being spring gold heads or something like that. Okay. The shaft, well, after 500 years of cleaning and doctoring in a museum, nobody will ever <laughs> know if there are fletchings on it. No. And so it comes through as a javelin. And I suspect mm. that if museums went and looked at the ends of their javelin shafts, and really studied to see if there was any bonding residue from glues. Mm. I suspect you'd find a lot in your museum collections that did have that because they're in the artwork, but they're not in museums. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Just to conclude then, Mariano Tackler's invention. Yeah, it's a good one. I think it seems pretty practical to me, yeah. yeah. I have one surprise for you, Matt, because I know that you like these fletched throwing thingies. I do. I have some plumbata with me, so oh, now is yes. your moment. <laughs> Take it away, Matt. Oh, oh they're quite heavy, actually, they aren't are. they? Yeah. They're heavier than I expected. Let's try an overarm one. Whoa! <laughs> wow, they go far. They're good, aren't they? That's really effective. It's fun throwing it like a sort of uh, hand grenade as well. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Those are awesome. They are awesome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm really aiming for that helmet. Wouldn't be the first time. That's nice. wonderful. They, they are, are good, so they? fun to throw. So there's only one thing that you really, really have to do. Well, you have to try underarm. <laughs> okay. And, and then you have to do throw, four in one go. Okay. Wow, it goes yeah. further. I would not have expected that. I think it goes further, but it's less accurate. I wouldn't beat yourself up too much. 
Oh, and they are they awesome, are aren't fun, they? Yeah. I mean, why they were ever dropped from <laughs> infantry warfare, I do not know. But can you imagine castle battlements with barrels of those? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, they're fantastic, aren't yeah. they? And, uh, you know, relatively cheap and yeah. relatively easy to make. They're small, so you can store tons and tons of them. Yeah, amazing things. Mm. Right, so Matt, the one that you have to try, because it is strangely compelling <laughs> is throw all of them together okay uh, overhand underhand i don't care grab them by the fletchings that's fantastic throw them it? in one hit Whoa! they went well out there oh Bump. there they are just <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but very effective if, if you've got a bunch of charging uh, Gauls coming at you or, and it is your last or Britons, ditch. then just boom. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Anyway, Thanks a lot. Thank you yeah. once again. So, Matt Easton, Scholar Gladiatoria, little cameo there by Alexander Holloway. And I got to throw some plumbata at last, <laughs> which they I've always wanted so to do. Cool. Yes, I have to get some. Lovely. I know where you can. Ah. Mm. <laughs>